What's good, nerds? Joe, a.k.a. The Butterfreak, bringing you my first PMP beta submission here. First off, before anything gets started, I'd really like to thank everyone for taking time out of their day to watch this battle. Definitely means a lot. Anyway, getting into things here, it is going to be a UU battle against my good friend Madden, man. Sorry, it's just got like a trillion A's in his name, and I feel like I have to say it like that. It's not really a trillion, it's more like three, but it looks like a trillion, so whatever. Anyway, getting into the battle here. I see an Aerodactyl in the lead slot. I figure it's going to be one of those classic Gen 4 Focus Sash Suicide leads. Um, I have a perfect plan for that. I'm going to be able to go ahead and lead with my Scarf Rotom, outspeed him, hit him with a Volt Switch, and here I get to get pretty much have a free switch into my Don Fan, which is like a triple win situation. If he goes for Rocks, doesn't really matter. If he goes for Stone Edge, well, Don Fan can take that for days. And in the end, I'm going to be able to hit him with a priority ice shard and take him out. So uh, that's exactly what happens. It's going to be looking real good for me here. Uh, looking 6-5, and everything on my team is literally at 100% health. So that's a really good opener for me. Here he goes into his Tangrowth, and I am fearing both the Sleep Powder and the Power Whip. So uh, I go into my Shaman, who's a perfect recipient for either of those things because of the Natural Cure and the Resist, but he sees that coming and makes a really nice double switch into his Rotom Heat, and this gets scary real early. I am so glad this wasn't a Specs Rotom, because the only thing I have to soak up those overheats is my specially defensive Zapdos, who is going to be taking 25% from rocks because I haven't had a chance to spin those away yet. Um, but judging by the amount of damage that it does, I don't think it's Scarf because I think Max Special Attack would have done a little bit more, and it's obviously not Specs. Because of that, I knew I'd be safe to just go ahead and go for the Roost. Uh, he goes into his Heracross both because it's a free switch and he was kind of hoping to catch maybe a Toxic on the switch. Uh, not what happens, I just play it safe, go for Roost because Zapdos, like I said, is the only thing I have for overheats. I can't leave it early. Here, I thought Stone Edge was really obvious, and I wanted to go into Donphan to take it, but at the same time, Donphan still has a lot of work left to do. He's got to get their rocks gone and still has to put up rocks, so I don't want him soaking close combats from a Heracross early. So instead, I go into my Scavalier, um, take the Stone Edge decently, decide to go for a Choice Banded Megahorn, and that does some serious work. That is a bulky Rotom, and that was a clear hit 2K, 2 hit KO after leftovers. That's that's power. Anyway, here I'm pretty much forced to death fodder out my Scavalier because rocks are still up. Um, I really don't want to be switching my Zapdos in again. I was like, hoping maybe he would not go for overheat. I don't know. Here, it's obvious that I need to get rocks away. His Aerodactyl's dead. As soon as I get the rapid spin off, it's that's it. Those rocks are gone forever. I need my Zapdos and my own Rotom to be able to switch in without any problems. He goes for a Will-O-Wisp. He misses. Not a big deal. I do end up just using my Donphan as a pivot switch. And here, I knew a Pain Split was coming, so I go into my own Rotom, who has zero HP investment. So uh, I figured that's the lead am least amount of HP he's going to be able to get and the least amount of damage he's going to be able to do to my team. Here I go for a trick. I was really hoping to catch his Snorlax creeping in on an overheat to soak it up no problems with... Well, I mean, thick fat and massive amounts of special defense. But uh, I was a little premature on that, which is terrible because as soon as it happened, I realized, oh, I officially have nothing for a curse lax because my Escavalier is dead. That was my only physical attacker, and I just tricked my scarf away. Um, what I should have done is, I don't know, anything other than that and then bring my Rotom in and revenge trick it after Snorlax sets up a little bit. I mean at least I don't know that way it would have been tricked. Instead I'm forced to try to 1v1 this with a Suicune. Luckily I do have an offensive Suicune. I think people forget how good offensive Suicune um, is right now. It, it does some serious work. Uh, I get a couple Calm Minds up, he gets a couple Curses up. We're only going to go for two because we both realize we're boosting the opposite stats. I'm boosting Special Attack and he's boosting his defense, he's boosting Attack and I'm boosting my Special Defense. So if one of us were to attack early, uh, it's pretty clear who was going to win that war. So I go for a Hydro Pump, hoping it would be a two hit KO, but it's clearly not, and especially not after Leftovers. He goes for a Body Slam, clearly a two hit KO there. Um, he does get a Paralyze, not going to be too big of a deal. I figure after a couple curses, Snorlax probably going to be slower than a Suicune, especially since I'm timid with a large amount of speed investment. Um, he takes me out with a second body slam, but not before I get to bring him low enough that I'm pretty sure I'll be able to bring in Peaches the Shaman and do some more work. Use Seed Flare, which by the way, 
absolutely the coolest looking move of this gen. Not even a contest. That move is epic. Not gonna lie. Especially coming from such a cute little hedgehog. Anyway, here I switch into my Donphan to take a Stone Edge. I knew he would predict a switch into Rotom to take a Megahorn. So, uh, you know, that was it was a good play on my part. I can tank those Stone Edges all day, every day. Absolutely amazing. And uh, this is... um. I know he's going to have to switch out because he's choiced. Uh, I figure he was going to be going into Rotom, so I make a double switch of my own into Zapdos. Because, uh, like I said, it's the only thing I have to take those overheats, which is really, really nice. And at this point, you're going to start seeing me get really, really aggressive with heat waves on my Zapdos. Um, I think we both kind of start to realize that Heracross is definitely going to be the key to this match. For him offensively and for me defensively, I need to continuously predict which move he's going to be using. And if I do it wrong once, pretty much lose, because that Heracross is going to be able to blow holes through my team. Here I go for a Thunderbolt instead of a Heat Wave again. I knew he wouldn't be going into Heracross since I did just reveal the Heat Wave. So... I figure Thunderbolt is uh, stab. It's going to do more damage to the incoming hitmon top. It's exactly what I do. Um, here he's predicting a switch out. He did kind of threaten me out with a Stone Edge there. Kind of bluffed it, which you'll later find out. I mean, bringing in a hitmon top on a Zapdos. Um, so I go into my Don Fan to take that predicted Stone Edge. Not the case. He goes for a close combat, and at this point I realize, you know, I need to get Rocks up myself. His Rotom only has enough health to switch in two times if I can get Rocks up, which would be really nice because I did give him that Scarf, and he has Pain Split and Will O Wisp, both of which demand switching out after using. And Overheat is his third move, and while it's a good move on a Scarf set, again it's another move that warrants switching out after using. So Rocks are going to be really really nice here um, I knew another switch was coming so I need to go into my Zapdos again uh, to take those overheats um, it's, it really is the only thing I have and this is actually a really kind of a scary situation here um, after this overheat my Z and the burn my Zapdos is, is looking real real grim especially since I didn't make the smart or safe play and just go for roost uh, I go for a heat wave um, which means he's free because he's scarfed to go ahead and go for another overheat and take out my Zapdos. But I figured he was going to need to keep as much death fodder as possible because he needs to be able to reset the moves on his Heracross if he's going to be able to take me out. So I knew he would switch because, well, he needs those resets. Um, here he goes into his Hitmon top and... Uh, we're going to have a little 1v1 here. He uh, He's going to go for a fake out. Life orb damage is starting to rack up on him. Uh, fake out does a decent amount. Um, I really want to roost. I was kind of hoping that maybe he would be faster and he wasn't just max HP, max attack. But, I mean, it's a techno top, so that's what it is. It was a really dumb play because here we go. Roost, lose my flying type. I'm specially defensive. Close combat is going to rail me. That does serious, serious work. Um, and again here... I think that he's going to switch out to save his Hitmon top for later, also to save it for uh, for switch fodder on his uh, Heracross's move, and he thinks I'm going to switch out to use Zapdos's death fodder to scout which move he locks himself into. So we both stay in. He goes for a close combat, thinking I'm switching to something else. That's what he's going to be able to hit hardest with. I go for a roost, thinking he's going to switch out, and I want to get my health back. I, I don't know. It was, it was kind of a weird series of events, but uh, yeah, in the end, he kind of gets the best of me. I'm pretty much forced to go into my Shaman here because it's the only thing that really wants to take a hit. Um, I knew a Mach Punch was coming, but it, again, it's it's all I really had. It doesn't really matter what I go for. Um, and here, this is uh, this is where it starts to get a little scary. I, I actually don't have anything left to take close combats. Um, I go into my Rotom... I, just kind of to figure out ex what he's going to do. I don't have a scarf, and even if I did, I'm pretty sure this guy would be faster since I was modest. And uh, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's jolly. No, he's adamant, but even then. Um, close combat, easily going to be able to take me out. He switches his hair across out because he doesn't want to rack up too many minus um, defense things. Goes into his Rotom, uses it as death fodder, um, which allows him to either pick a new move if he wants to, or to you know reset those defense drops. It was a pretty good play there. Um, Don fans low enough that he's definitely not going to be able to take a close combat. And Shaman's only got like 270 health left, so it's, I'm pretty sure that I lost this match at this point. Um, all I have left is is Shaman, and uh, he's got a scarf hair across. He's going to be going for a close combat. Really didn't think 
that this was going to happen because Shaman lives with 50 hit points. Oh my god. Peach is your beast. I'm going to be able to go for an HP fire and after minus two special defense, that's definitely going to be able to Oko and I'm right back in this battle. All he's got left is a Tangrowth and uh, it's at full health. I've got a 74 HP Shaman. Um, and... You know, this is pretty much the last key play of the match. I go for a rest here instead of just going straight for HP Fire. Now, my reasoning for doing that was, despite the fact that Tangrowth has really bad special defenses, I figured HP Fire was going to be a two-hit KO. I wasn't quite sure how much damage a Power Whip would do. I thought it maybe had the potential to do 72 damage. I'm not quite sure. And at the same time, if he went for Sleep Powder and I went for uh, HP Fire and it didn't kill, that would mean he would have two chances, maybe, maybe one if I get the lucky first turn wake up, but, you know, he would have a couple chances to try to take me out with Power Whip. Um, instead, by going for the sleep, I bring myself into a place where I'll be able to tank his hits all day, plus I block his sleep powder. I'm going to be able to wake up, hit him with a couple hidden power fires, and that's going to be the match. It was really, really fun. I really didn't think I was going to pull it out. I thought Heracross had it right there, going to sweep through my team with those close combats. Shaman, you're a monster. Thank you for living. Uh, for the rest of you, thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this, please feel free to check me out. I did just get started. Um, I try to post a variety of matches on my channel, anything from RU to uh, I've got some tournament-ready OU stuff. Um, I do try to keep it fresh. I don't try to do all serious narrations. I've got some joke stuff up on there as well. I got a 6-0 Diglett sweep. I do some shout casting of matches. I'm going to start doing top three plays, so uh, definitely feel free to check it out. Other than that, have a good one.